How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video we're going to be going over the ultimate guide to game week 38. You know it's the final game week of the FPL season so a lot is riding on the line. Uh, in this video we'll be talking about a lot of talking points so apologies it probably will be a little bit of a longer video but as it is an ultimate guide I'm pretty sure you guys won't mind. Uh, we'll be going over multiple points such as mini leagues. A lot of questions have been asked about those in mini leagues if they either trailing or they are currently leading their mini leagues and what you can do to kind of negate the risk of losing that lead and what you can do to kind of make up that lead. We're going to be looking at a live team and I'm going to be going through my own analysis so you guys can kind of replicate that in your own mini leagues where it is seen fit. We're also going to be talking about the Friot obviously as well as some differentials and the best Man City triple up after they win uh, against Watford. I'm pretty sure all of us will be looking to have three of their players going into game week 38. So what three players are the best bang for your buck and the best options to go for? We'll be talking about that to finalize the ultimate guide. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Let's get into it. So a quick reminder about the deadline with Davey livestream. I think if there is one deadline stream that you have to be in uh, for this FPL season. It's going to be the Game Week 38 deadline stream. I'll be hopefully getting a lot of early team news and that will obviously have an impact on our final free at side. I'll be uploading my final draft uh, probably on Friday um, in the team selection video. So stay tuned for that. And then in the deadline stream, we'll be finalizing our own free at squad uh, with obviously, as I said, that team news. So make sure you're in the stream and I hopefully will see you there. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is the whole mini league debate. A lot of questions were asked to me over on Twitter uh, with people either winning their mini league by about 30 points or whatever and then also people that have to make up those 30 points and what they can do. So on screen here I have Joey Daha. So apologies if I am pronouncing your name wrong but he's currently the leader in the Davy vs the World mini league as well as being 16th in the world. So apologies Joey if you didn't want to be in the limelight uh, but unfortunately I think you deserve to be 16th in the world is a great position to be in and we'll be analyzing your squad. So this is Joey's game week 36 squad. I'm not going to be looking at his game week 37 squad as I don't think there's much merit to that whereas we can look at the game week 36 squad and then kind of see what he did in game week 37. Uh, so I'll be going through a full analysis of this squad. This is what you guys should do uh, for either if you're leading so you'll do it on the second player or the third player or if you have to catch up those points you'll be looking at your mini league leader and analyzing their squad. So what I'm going to be doing Doing here is basically looking at Joey's squad and kind of predicting what he's going to be doing and I'll be doing my transfers around Joey uh, to kind of negate the risk of catch either him catching up or me trying to catch up to him and having to look for some differentials. So the analysis is basically going to start from you got to go to the, the player's team. So it will be their Game Week 37 Plus team. Uh, when Game Week 37 concludes, obviously there is the games tonight, which will probably have a big impact on a lot of the transfer decisions and team selection going into Game Week 38. But you can see there, Joey made one transfer uh, in Game Week 36. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back and see if that player made another transfer the previous Game Week. If they didn't, uh, then they obviously will have two free transfers going into game week 38. Um, unfortunately, Joey used his free it, so he doesn't have two free transfers. He just has the one. If we looked back at Joey's record, he is currently, I think this is the fourth consecutive game week that he's gone for the Fernandez captain. Um, so if I had to predict his captain, it would have been usually Fernandez. However, because of that harder fixture against Leicester, I don't think Joey will be going for Fernandez, especially because he's so high up. There are other better options to go for. I think a lot of people are going to go for the Man City options. So in this case, we can't really predict Joey's captain, which is a little bit unfortunate as you usually want to kind of, the captaincy is the most important factor to predict. Um, if I had to go for a guess, I probably would say he might look at a differential such as Kane, or he might do the De Bruyne to Sterling transfer, which a lot of people will be going for, and then he'll just captain Sterling. So I do think it'll probably be a safe option of a Man City option, or he'll go differential and go for Kane. Uh, in terms of the rest of the squad, it looks like a pretty good squad to go by. I think he's going to have quite a benching headache going into game week 37. I think we saw that. I think he benched Foden. A little bit unlucky there, but I think I would have done the same move. Would have definitely played Mores over Foden. So a little bit unlucky on that one. Uh, but he has used all his chips as well. So that's something that you've got to look at. You've got to take a look at the chips your opponent has used. Uh, unfortunately, Joey's used all his chips, as I said, with the free at uh, concluding in game week 35. Um, so there's going to be no free at there. I think a lot of people kind of predict their rival squads, but then don't look. And then they actually end up having a free it in Gaming 38. So just take your look for that. Obviously, if the player still has the 
free edge. You can't really predict their lineup and you've got to kind of just go for the players that you think will do the best. If I was to kind of try and catch up on Joey here, I would go light on United. I would probably only have one of their attackers uh, just because Joey has tripled up with Fernandez, Martial and Rashford. So I would only go for one attacker because of that Leicester fixture and I would stack uh, the, the lineups. I would go for a play like Sterling. Unfortunately, he does have Kane, which is quite a nice differential in this free hit. So I would look at Kane, uh, but if you have to catch up the points, you could also look at Hume and Son. I don't think Jay will be going for Son because he has Kane, so that could be a nice differential to go by. A little bit unlucky with the Wolves assets as well. They do obviously have Chelsea, so I wouldn't have any Wolves options. I would still have Nick Pope to kind of negate the points he gets, but then I would go quite differential on the rest of the defense, maybe even triple up on that Burnley defense uh, because I I don't think uh, Joey is going to be transferring out Trent Alexander-Arnold and Aurier. So this is basically what you have to do with your specific opponents. Just take an analysis, whether it just be seeing how many free transfers they have or if they're going to be using a chip. That could be plenty of, of enough information to kind of make your decisions. Uh, but as I said, it's all kind of dependent on who you go for. If you're trying to secure your lead, I would try and predict the captain they go for and go for the same captain or go for the same team. A strategy that people are using is kind of free hitting to replicate their opponent's squad. Uh, to kind of negate the points scored against them and then if you're trying to catch up I would go for differential options so look at your opponent and kind of predict who they're going to captain and then go for a completely different captain and a more differential a transfer in if you're kind of catching up those points hopefully this was useful it is a little bit hard to to kind of go for each individual team because obviously FPL is quite a situational thing uh, but hopefully this analysis did kind of help you out so teams to target for this game week 38 uh, the teams have changed a little bit because of the result Results last night obviously Arsenal ended up losing against Aston Villa and that puts a little bit of worry in my mind about Arsenal kind of facing these teams that have a lot to play for and are going to be quite a hard opposition to face so that's why I've kind of taken Arsenal off my lineup because obviously Watford Bournemouth and Aston Villa are now all tied on points I do believe I think Bournemouth might be just below them but definitely Watford and uh, Aston Villa so those teams are going to be super competitive in game week 38 as they basically need to win to stay in the Premier League so I've taken Arsenal off they could still be good options I just think the options I would go for such as Obama Yang, are quite expensive and then with the resurgence of of the more expensive Man City options, I think that's where I'm probably going to be spending my budget. So the other teams uh, you could be targeting, uh, Everton is a little bit of a hit on this side. I only have them in here because they do have some cheaper options. If you need to kind of spread your money with the likes of Sterling and Salah and you need a cheap alternative, you could go for someone like Calvert Lewin. I know he has an incredibly bad record right now. I don't think he's scored since the lockdown seasons returned, uh, but him or a Charleston could be some good options. Also think defensively, uh, there are some cheap alternatives that you could look at from Everton, but I would only kind of look at them if you really need to. The teams I would be focusing on are Man City from an attacking point of view, Burnley from a defensive point of view, and then Liverpool from a defensive and attacking point of view. I think that's going to be a good result for Liverpool. And then uh, obviously Spurs, they also have Crystal Palace, which could be quite good. So defensively and attacking wise from Spurs. Uh, if you really had to look at the fixtures, I think there's not too many great fixtures that stand out besides the, maybe the Man City game and the Liverpool game. And then there obviously are those tougher fixtures such as Leicester and Man United where anything can happen. I know Leicester haven't been doing that well recently. Uh, so your United options could still be quite attractive. But I just think uh, with the teams that have better fixtures, I won't be looking too much at Man United if I was to free it. So the differentials, a lot of people are asking me, uh, please do a kind of differential free at draft. Uh, I will be using the top 10k ownership here. It's a little bit hard to predict the overall ownership just because of how many uh, non-live teams there are. Teams that haven't made about five transfers in the last five game weeks or something like that. So those teams can be considered as dead. And then I'm pretty sure that uh, less than 50% of uh, the overall teams are live. So it's a little bit hard to predict. So that's why I'm using the top 10k. Uh, but there are in the top 10k 30% of managers will be using their free at going in to game week 38 so what I, why I'm saying that and why I'm bringing it up is if we look at a player like Kane uh, currently owned by 6% of people but I do think if 30% of managers are free hitting I think that ownership of Kane is going to go up exponentially probably about 25% 20% um, still a good differential in the top 10k but not considered maybe a mega differential of 6% ownership so just keep that in mind when we do look at these players and their ownership is probably going to change uh, throughout the games and the chances that people make and if people use their free it. The also thing I wanted to mention is if we look at the likes of Burnley. So Tarkowski is owned by about 20% of people uh, but the thing where you're going to get the differential is when you double up or triple up on the Burnley defense. So a lot of people own Nick Pope. I think his ownership is about 50% in the top 10k but if you then accompany Nick Pope with a player like Peters that's going to take that overall combination ownership 
down a lot. So that's something that you can look for. Also wanted to mention that it, to me, a differential in the top 10K is basically anyone that's owned by less than 40% of people. I think that's a great differential to go by. So if you look at the players that are even popular, I mean, the likes of Salah, 43% owned. He can be considered as a differential because basically 40% of people own him. Uh, but then you look at Sadio Mane, who's owned by 9% of people. So it's the same kind of fixture and the same sort of player. You're just banking on Mane outscoring Salah, which could be something that you go for. So I wanted to say here that you don't have to go for mega differentials, owning the likes of Lamptey from Brighton to really get, get some good differentials in your squad. And just look at the lineups. We have Sterling there, 30% ownership, probably going to go up to about 40%, 50%. Uh, you could even go for him. He can be considered a, a differential. And the likes of Mares, 15%, and David Silva, 10%. For a Man City midfielder, that's really good value if they do stay around that ownership. So don't look too outside the box with your differentials. Look at the combinations of players. That can even be considered a, a differential. And uh, just go for the players that you think are going to score the most points. Some mega differentials. I do think the whole mega differential debate has taken a big hit this week uh, because of the, the relegation battle kind of continuing on going into game week 38. I think the only team that's confirmed out is the likes of Norwich. Uh, so Watford, Bournemouth and Aston Villa still have a lot to play for. And this is why I kind of don't think there's going to be that many mega differentials because I think even though Watford, Bournemouth and Aston Villa are going to be fighting for their lives, I reckon they're going to go for one goal and then kind of park the bus a little bit, go for a nice 1-0 victory like we saw Aston Villa versus Arsenal. Not saying that Aston Villa didn't play well. They actually had continuous uh, chances throughout the game. Uh, but I just think with the likes of Watford, Bournemouth and Aston Villa, because it's going to be so tight at the bottom there, don't think they're going to be focused too much on goal difference because they need to win. Um, so I think those games are going to be quite close. You could go for them. That's why I'm, I've kind of highlighted them in this uh, mega differential picture because I do think those players are going to be going for it, uh, going for their all. I think the likes of uh, Trezeguet or maybe Samata from Aston Villa, if he continues to play, could be an option. And then maybe like a Troy Deeney or something. He's always kind of good in those clutch situations. So he could be someone that you go for. Uh, Bournemouth also going to be quite attacking. Everton haven't been playing quite well. Uh, so Bournemouth could be someone you look at maybe like a Solanke or a Wilson or whoever. I actually don't even know if Callum Wilson's fit right now because Bournemouth have been so out of it. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Maybe you can go for someone like them. Also, I think Southampton, there could be some options beside Danny Ings that you could look at. And then with Burnley, I think uh, we've spoken about the Burnley defense, but I think the Burnley attack, I think Chris Wood is owned by about 10% of the top 10K. So you could be looking at him as a nice mega differential if you want to kind of opt for the Burnley attack and then one or two of their uh, defenders. But I do think this game is going to be quite a boring one because there's not many two predictable differentials that we can look at and I think a lot of people will just go for the likes of the Man City and Liverpool assets and not really have that much budget to spend in the end. So the best Man City triple up, this is kind of the question that's going to be continuously changing. However, I do think we can get a good prediction uh, because of obviously the result last night. So we saw David Silva miss out completely. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne played a full 90. Mares only came off the bench for the last 26. And then Sterling had 63 minutes. So my personal favorite three is going to be the likes of David Silva, uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Raheem Sterling. So the reason being is kind of a special edition kind of thing because Raheem Sterling's going for the golden boot. Kevin De Bruyne is going for the assist record and then David Silva, it's his last game. So all these players kind of have a, a something to play for, which is why I favor them quite a lot. I just, however, don't think I'll be able to afford this three, which is why I've included Mares in here because I do think he starts the game because he has been rested in the last two, which is quite weird. Um, I think a lot of people were expecting him to start because he came off in that FA Cup game, but that wasn't the case. You know, Pep Guardiola, we can't kind of predict what he does. Uh, so that's why I think I'll probably go for David Silva, Mares and Raheem Sterling. However, I do think Kevin De Bruyne is a good option to go by. I think this is going to continuously change, as I said. And once we finally get that Man City lineup, hopefully confirm news, I think that's where we're going to kind of concrete our choices and who we go for. I do think, however, I will be captaining a Man City player, probably the likes of Sterling, because I do think he will start. And I think that we're going to be looking at some nice FPL points at the end of the day. So this is basically going to wrap up the video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please like it if you did. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new or have not subscribed yet. I'll be seeing you guys in the deadline stream as well as the final team selection coming up later in the week. Otherwise, stay tuned to my Twitter at DaveyFPL uh, for confirmed chances as well as confirmed news uh, talking about those upcoming videos and streams. I'm going to be signing off. This has been DaveyFPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.